Assalamu alaikum and good morning. It's Friday morning and welcome to today's morning barakah. It's approaching the nights coming up to the 10th of Ramadan, which is the Shahada of the mother of the Imams and the mother of Sayyidah Fatima salam. Sayyidah Khadija, peace be upon her. These nights will be coming up, so keep us in your du'as, inshallah. Inshallah, and indeed, the Shahada of Sayyidah Khadija will be approaching soon, and it's important to commemorate these nights and remember Sayyidah Khadija. She was the first and most beloved wife of our Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. And in the first couple of years, we must all remember that she was the one who supported the Muslims financially. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed, Sister Zara, we should be prepared for the next coming up days for Sayyidah Khadija Shahada. Let's see what we have coming up for you this morning also, inshallah. We have the Holy Quran with our very own Mustafa Ali, and he'll be reciting the beautiful verses of the Quran, in particular from Al Imran. Can't wait. We also have Brother um, Ibrahim Ansari on the couch with our daily du'as, and this morning we're going to be looking at um, reciting a du'a before iftar, so it's really important to know this. We also have Sister Dua with spiritual upliftment from the Holy Quran. Really looking forward to that this morning. Um, how to benefit from the Holy Quran and what to recite to get the most blessings in this holy month of Ramadan. Inshallah. And today we also have our nutrition and health. Brother Bilal will be looking and um, will be in the kitchen discussing fish and bread with life coach and MLP practitioner Fahima Muhammad and Chef Ben. And I'm um, looking forward to that. And it's very important to have a balanced diet in this holy month. We to have a chef in the house as well. <laughs> and in the month of Ramadan, we should be praying and paying attention to etiquette and, our, and those less fortunate ones. Sister Zara and Sister Masuma Jafar will be discussing this in Ramadan etiquette. Today's topic is dua and prayer and how we can make the most of the holy month of Ramadan. Definitely, I'm really looking forward to sitting down with Sister Masuma again. But even more than that, I um, can't wait for our cute little Abbas, Bessim. He's once again stayed up to um, share the lights of our morning daily hadith. MashaAllah, he's so cute, bless him. And to end this fantastic show, before your morning prayer, we have our very own side, Mosin Shah from Akam SOS, on the couch with your questions and queries. Can't wait to hear from him. The topic for today is fasting and medicine. Fantastic. Right now, it's time for our morning Baraka competition details. You and a friend could win the chance to visit Imam Hussain and Abul Fazl Abbas. Peace and blessings be upon them for July 2018. For the competition details, stay tuned for Brother Ahmed. Do you want the chance to visit Imam Hussain and Abul Fazl Abbas? Peace be upon them both. Well, you've come to the right place. Morning Baraka is giving away two free tickets to Karbala this July 2018. I am standing here with the Holy Shrine of Imam Hussein Hussain behind me to give you the chance to send your salutations to the Imam in person. The exclusive Morning Baraka competition is the chance for you and a friend to visit the Holy Shrine of Imam Hussain. For your chance to win, answer the following question. Name two names given to the holy land of Karbala in Iraq. We need your emails with your answer and details which include a telephone number, phone name and address. Entries are free of charge and closed by the 30th of June 2018. All entries after may not be accepted so please put your entries in before the deadline. To enter, you must be over the age of 18. Right now it's time for my favorite part of the show, the Quran recitation with Brother Mustafa Ali. I'm really looking forward to this section. Absolutely. It definitely nourishes your soul. And, Indeed. Um, so welcome, Brother Mustafa. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. How are you doing today? UK? Alhamdulillah. Good to see good, you. Good, good, good. Alhamdulillah. Likewise. So inshallah, you'll be reciting um, Surah Ali Imran, um, ayahs 190 to 195? Yes, inshallah. Inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن 
في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لأولي الألباب الذين يذكرون الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا ربنا إنك من تدخل النار فقد أخزيته وما للظالمين من أنصار ربنا إننا سمعنا مناديا ينادي للإيمان أن آمنوا بربكم فآمن ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف فاستجاب لهم ربهم أني لا أضيع عمل عامل منكم من ذكر أو أنثى بعضكم من بعض فالذين هاجروا وأخرجوا من ديارهم وأوذوا في سبيلي وقاتلوا 
قَتَلُوا قُتِلُوا لَأُكَفِّرَنَّ عَنْهُمْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ لَأُكَفِّرَنَّ عَنْهُمْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ وَلَأُدْخِلَنَّهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ وَلَأُدْخِلَنَّهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ ثَوَابًا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ ثواب صدق الله العلي العظيم Mashallah that was that was excellent that was excellent be very you beautiful recitation yeah. yes absolutely Mashallah. absolutely it's always nice to hear the recitation of the Holy Quran it's a, it's a blessing it yeah, is a, a blessing indeed and I'm really looking forward to this section also the du'as of Ramadan, Inshallah. Brother Ibrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu wa rahmatullah. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Alhamdulillah, how are you? Good, Alhamdulillah. To, see you. Good, Good to see you. Welcome to the show again. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me once again. Always a pleasure. Always. Absolutely yeah. enjoying the um, <laughs> the wisdom that you're sharing with us and you know, helps yeah, to yeah. connect um, with these du'as. So this morning we're going to be discussing du'a for iftar. Yes, Inshallah. Um, so would you like to give us a bit of background or perhaps recite how are you? Inshallah, definitely. Um, generally, we are on the table. It's about it's iftar time finally mm. after what nineteen hours. Um, so I think unless you're in Australia, unless you're in Australia, <laughs> yeah. even even worse, Argentina. Apparently, they have like what eight hours or something. Really? Yeah. So <laughs> maybe, maybe we should catch, catch a flight there. <laughs> now, uh, um, <coughs> in in is a beautiful way to start before your meal is um, by going to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So I recommend the dua that we have. It's Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad Allahumma laka sumt wa ala rizqika aftart wa alayka tawakkalt Bismillah Allahumma laka sumna wa ala rizqika aftarna fataqabbal minna innaka anta as-sami'u al-alim بسم الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا واسع المغفرة اغفر لي وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد beautiful thank you so much that was very refreshing to hear and what's the translation of the dua so you start off with oh Allah for you I fasted and with what you have granted me I broke my fast so it's relating to the food and my reliance is on you so I rely on you O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then you carry on in the name of Allah O oh Allah for you we have fasted again and with the food that you have granted me I have broke. I, I broke my fast. So, O oh Allah, accept from us. Then it carries on to say, "Inna ka al alim." You are the hearer and the knower of of what we have of of what we have done, and you can hear us right now. So, just listen to us and accept this from us. And then it carries on to say, "In the name of Allah again, the beneficent, the merciful." O oh, he whose indul indulgence is boundless, forgive, forgive us. Mm -hmm. So you're asking mm -hmm. for forgiveness just before you start, just after you've ended your fast. 
and just before you start your meal as well. Yeah. So yeah. much humility in that, isn't it? It's the gratitude, yeah. it's the acknowledgement of his power and to say that we are sinful, whatever we have done, except even, forgive us. Even after finishing a fast so yeah. that we don't get that. It's a nice reminder that, I know, hey, look at me, man. I'm yeah. so, hey, I just done a fast. And mm. Like I'm doing Allah a favor, Uthabila, you know? To rem Absolutely. remind yourself that, hey, yeah. you still need forgiveness. Still 100%. asking. It's from the one that's the most generous. And we're so, I think we, even with these du'as, as you're reciting them, and we're so blessed to actually you know, hear them, that you, even in the school of Ahl Bayt, we have so much mercy through these du'as. Because, Definitely. you know, when you look at other schools of thoughts and people, you talk to people, what do you recite when you open your fast? What do you recite when you close? And w no one has these pearls. I think it shows the completion of our religion. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Definitely, mm -hmm. completion. So we have, we have du'as that almost have to recite when you enter your house, yeah. when you leave your house, um, when, when you're about to start an exam, when you're anything, anything, anything you can think yeah. of, there's a du'a, mm -hmm. there's a dhikr yeah. of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think that's very beautiful. Very, and, and we're one so of, blessed. One of, one of the things about the du'as, which I, I love so much about the, the du'as of al Bay is that they're like a classroom, so it's not just a prayer yeah. and a mm. request for forgiveness or for, for blessing, but also the doers that make you think about, okay, so it's teaching you the, the servant and the relationship with the Lord, you know, and what one should ask for, and like there's a bit of theology and philosophy and all these different ideas that's compressed into the this very the short recitation. They're the teachers, aren't they? Indeed. They, yeah, they are our living examples mm -hmm. of how to, how to speak to our lives. How to live, that. how to live, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, so in terms of... <laughs> Those people that, you know, bless them for the long day, especially the, yeah. the you know, northern hemisphere where we are at the moment, long um, fasts and... Um, more blessings. Absolutely. Definitely. But Longer day, more blessings. I yeah. sometimes think about, you know, the manual workers that, you know, have to all day outside and, you know, they must get this morsel of food like I just need to quickly eat. Yeah. But it's, it's really important to give yourself those couple of minutes to actually acknowledge who gave you this food and, you know, who gave you the figures in it to go through. Do you know what? That is very beautiful. But I would add on to that yeah. something even even more. Like we mentioned before, dua is closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we are in the state in the state of hunger mm. and thirst. I think at this specific time we are closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. He saw our struggle. Maybe out of his mercy, and I, I would say maybe just because we can't say definitely, but if I was just a bit more confident, I would have said definitely, but mm. maybe. Just by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looking at the struggle that this servant has gone through after this whole day, listening to, to his obligation that was, that was given to him through the Prophet by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe, just maybe, he'll say, Do you know what? The servant of mine has gone through a lot. Let me accept this dua from him. Let me accept his prayers. And therefore we have in our, in our recommendations, not only is it mustahab to recite this, but there are many other duas, not only that, you ask just before you start eating, ask your wishes to Allah yeah. subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ask him. He'll grant you. Yep. He, he will grant you. You've gone through a lot of struggle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is part of his mercy. And that, in that time, it's very crucial, isn't it? It's mm. that desperation to put that food in, give yourself yeah. the energy. But, and it's like when you complete your salah, they say that, you know, the one that gets up from his prayer without pr um, actually asking Allah for a, a hajat, it's like the seeds are um, scattered and you don't, uh, like a bird who can pick to eat, you don't yeah. pick those and you, you just get up and you deny yourself that, that blessing that Allah has given. So to utilize those moments, isn't Definitely. it? Definitely, 100%. Your but I think in one of your previous um, mornings, we spoke about the, um, the sincerity that's important. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can, you recall that dua that you would, um, it's quite a lengthy one, but it was talking about sincerity. Um, how much do you think that counts in sort of, do you think, you know, Allah's mercy is endless, it's 100%. infinite. Um, do you think that's a crucial, critical sort of prerequisite to have when you're fasting? Is it a sincerity of why you're doing it or is it just, oh, I'm doing it because, you know, my mum will beat me, yeah. my dad will beat me? No, of course, um, <laughs> this, uh, what you're referring to right now is the sermon of the Prophet in welcoming the month of Ramadan and in which uh, he says, um, pray to Allah with pure intentions and with clean hearts. Now, 100%, like we said, within sincerity, there is more chance of acceptance. And the thing is, sincerity, I think, lies under this, where you accept with whatever Allah has given you. I think that's part of being sincere. So you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and not for just anything you say, oh, do you know what, Allah didn't grant me my wishes. And I would relate to that, dua al-iftitah. And dua al-iftitah, personally, 
I love reciting it in the month of Ramadan and I would say arguably is my favorite dua. My favorite dua. Is it the longer one? The long one, long, the one that you yeah. recite after Salat al Maghrib. Yes, yes. Now it has specific parts within it which again shows humility and it shows how much we've come short towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even in this acceptance of the dua. I did actually bring with me a uh, part of it just because I thought it would be mentioned uh, nice to mention. Indeed. Yeah. Excellent. The first, the very this 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 part that I that I want to focus on for a bit is, Allahumma ni yas'aluka qalilan min kathir. Oh Allah, I want to ask you little from abundance. Ma'ahajatan bi ilay ma'ahajatan bi ilayhi alima. I have a great need for this. Wa ghinaka anhu qadim. And for you to just put it aside, that's that's nothing for you. It's very easy for you. وَهُوَ عَنْدِي كَثِيرٌ وَهُوَ عَلَيْكَ سَهْلٌ يَسِيرٌ For me it is a lot, but for you it is very easy. And then this is the beauty. اللهم إن عفوك عن ذنبي Oh Allah, for you to forgive my sins. وتجاوزك عن خطيئتي And for you to put away my mistakes. وصفحك عن ظلمي And to forgive me for my oppressions. وسترك على قبيح عملي And for you to put like a cloth over every bad action that I have done. وحلمك عن كثير جرمي عندما كان من خطأي وعمدي. When when it was from my fault, and when I did it purposely. أطمعني في ما أطمعني في أن أسألك ما لا أستوجبه منك الذي رزقتني من رحمتك. It made me ask you for what? Do you know what? I don't even deserve this, but it's from your mercy that I'm asking you. And then it, it carries on. It carries on. And then this part I think is even even more beautiful. فَإِنْ أَبْطَى عَنِّي عَتَبْتُ بِجَهْلِ عَلَيْكَ So if you don't ask me, out of my own childishness, out of my little knowledge, I say this is because of you. I didn't get this. عَتَبْتُ بِجَهْلِ عَلَيْكَ وَلَعَلَّ الَّذِي أَبْطَى عَنِّي هُوَ خَيْرٌ لِي لِعِلْمِكَ بِعَاقِبَةِ الْأُمُورِ And maybe, just maybe, what has made it, what made your answer come slower is out of your infinite knowledge that you have given me what is better for me. And I think that is that is that is very very beautiful, and it carries on. It carries on. إنك تدعوني فأولي عنك. You call upon me, and I run and I run away from you. وتتحبب إلي فأتبغض إليك. And you come to show me love and mercy, and you know what? I reply with anger. And then وتتودد إلي فلا أقبل منك. And you show me more compassion, and I just turn my head away like that. So it's كأن لي تطول عليك. And it's as if I have that chance to, uh, I, have, I have the right, I have the right to, to act like that towards you. فلم يمنع فلم يمنع كذلك من الرحمة لي والإحسان إليه. Yet, that did not, this allow you from showing me your mercy. Subhanallah, subhanallah. I just think it's, um, I think, thank you for bringing that. I think that's just um, sort of, I think it just gives the purpose of how we are supposed to think in this month. I mean, Definitely. That's just, obviously, if you're reminding yourself every night of those du'as and you're reciting it, um, the connection that you have to Allah, that what are we? And yet he loves us infinitely. Mm. And, and his love, and if we recognize his love, even for a bit, and actually gratitude, then how much mercy more would he give us? Definitely. SubhanAllah. Thank Subhanallah. you so much Thank for you that. very that's much. all Thank we've you. got time for today. Thank you. And Thank you. inshallah, yeah. keep us in your du'as. Inshallah, in likewise, day. inshallah. inshallah. We we'll ask Allah to accept our du'as. Inshallah. Amen. Inshallah. Amen. inshallah. Um, so now we have time. Um, next up is um, Baraka Pulse with um, Dua Maksumi and um, the benefits of Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum. I am Dua Maksumi and I am here to show you how the Holy Quran can improve your life. Allah says in this verse, if he has sent down the Qur'an upon a mountain, you would have seen it humbled and coming apart from the fear of Allah. And these examples we set to present to the people, perhaps they will give thought. Do you know the benefits of the holy month of Ramadan? Ramadan is the month in which the Qur'an was revealed so that what better time we have to reconnect with ourselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through it. It was sent to mankind as a complete guide to guide us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed has blessed us with this holy Qur'an from guidance from the dark into the light for us to recite it and to learn from it. Now, what are the benefits of this holy month of Ramadan? 
Well, let's talk about how the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he has this khutbah, a speech, specifically for the holy month of Ramadan. And every year I'm used to hearing it from my father. And this year I decided to share it with you. Because when you read the speech, the khutbah that Rasulullah has given to the people before the holy month of Ramadan to remind us of how much it has benefits and how it has blessings, it makes you wait for this month and it makes you understand how special and how great of a blessing this whole holy month is. So refer to your Mafatih al-Jinan. It's in every Mafatih al-Jinan. It's available in the sections of the month of Ramadan. So in the beginning, when you go to the section of the month of Ramadan, the first page, it's in small writing, but it dis it's the khutbah of Rasulullah of the month of Ramadan. Now, I'll just give you six quick benefits that Rasulullah has said in his speech. He says that Ramadan, and fasakum fihi tasbih, your breath is tasbih. وَنَوْمُكُمْ فِيهِ عِبَادَةً Your sleep is a worship. وَعَمَلَكُمْ فِيهِ مَقْبُولٌ Your deeds are all accepted. وَدُعَاءَكُمْ فِيهِ مُسْتَجَابٌ Your supplications will always be answered. Then he says, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ O oh you people, إِنَّ أَنفُسُكُمْ مَرْهُونَ بِأَعْمَالِكُمْ Meaning yourself depends on the deeds you have done. فَفُكُّهَا بِاسْتِخْفَارِكُمْ So erase all your bad deeds with your reciting astighfar. ظُهُورَكُمْ ثَقِيلًا مِنْ أَوْزَارِكُمْ Your backs are heavy. Why are they heavy? Because of the sins that we have. So what do we do? Rasulullah says, خَفُّفُوا عَنْهَا بِطُولِ سُجُودِكُمْ When you're in the posture of doing sujood, imagine those sins fall out. So when you pray, Rasulullah says, فَخَفَّفُوا عَنْهَا بِطُولِ سُجُودِكُمْ So remove those sins with your long sujood. Allah has put so much emphasis and importance for the, month of Ramadan, for the month of Ramadan because it is the holy month and we are guests to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet continues in his speech and he says, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّهُ قَدْ أَقْبَلَ إِلَيْكُمْ شَهْرُ اللَّهِ بِالْبَرَكَ وَالرَّحْمَ وَالْمَغْفَرَةِ the month of Ramadan has come to you and is giving you mercy and forgiveness. Shahrun huwa andallahi afdal shuhur. It is one of the greatest months. Wa ayyamihi afdal al ayyam. And the days are the greatest days. Wa layalihi afdal al layali. And its nights are the greatest nights. Wa sa'atihi afdal al sa'at. And the hours of the month of Ramadan are the greatest hours. Huwa shahrun. It is a month that we are called upon to be the guests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What better benefits can we have other than that? Taqabbal Allahu a'malakum wa Ramadan mubarak. Nutrition and health. So I have with me uh, two guests today. Assalamu alaikum brother Ben. Wa alaikum salam, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. And the NLP practitioner, Sister Fahima Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum sister. Wa alaikum salam. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Good, good, good. So yeah. Ben, what do you have in store for us today? Yeah, today we have a traditional Irish bread uh, to show you guys at home. Really simple to make. Um, simple? Very simple. I see, Probably I see an assortment of stuff around. Yeah, it has got a, f a few Fishes and knives steps, and stuff. And but this, doesn't, this, this recipe doesn't have any yeast in it. Okay. So you don't need to leave it to rise for an hour and then have a second rise and then all that blarney. You don't need to do any of that. It's just really simple. The buttermilk reacts with the bicarb. Uh, um, immediate reaction. You will see the dough start to, to, to change before you. and um, Before your very eyes. That's what makes the, the dough rise. Also, you don't need to knead it. You don't need to you know, work your arm out for 10 minutes to, to get a, a great uh, loaf. It's, it's just so simple. OK. So okay. I'm going to go ahead. That's really interesting. I love bread, but it always puts me off because of the time factor yeah. and the fact that, you know, it is quite bloating and people mm. that are worried about their diet and looking at the ingredients over here, because it doesn't have yeast. Those with gluten intolerant get, and all these yes, people, yeah. you would not get that bloating feeling. So soda bread is a very good type of bread to use and have. Um, generally, not just for Ramadan, but I mm -hmm. think it's really good for a lot of people that would actually love to have bread. Nutrition-wise? Nutrition-wise, as yes. well as uh, the fact that it's really quick and easy. Exactly. I've got a scene is believing, because you keep saying that, <laughs> both of you are saying that word quick, and I'm just... 
quick. I'm not saying I don't believe you, but I just want to, you know, I want to see this thing play out. When I tell you, I'm I'm 50 percent done already. Okay. That that's how simple. Bosh, bosh. So, if you need a uh, some more water just to, to bring it together, that's fine. I'm using about 300 mils of um, buttermilk. Yep. And about how much? Three, uh, three seven five of of flour, and you can you can mix up the flours if you want to use plain. If you want to use um, whole milk, whole milk's great for. Don't you use one of those? I'm 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 I'm, 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 not, I'm not on the right path. <laughs> no, no no, don't need a rolling pin for this. Okay. Really simple, just your hands and some elbow grease. So I'm just going to bring it together with my with my hands to create to create a ball, and that's going to be the basis for our for our loaf. A lot of people are afraid of having bread and they cut it down when it comes to the diet. But the thing is, again, it's about having the balance and this sort of um, recipe is amazing for you to continue having what you love, but as a healthy option. Healthy. And, That's a good um, word, healthy. We like yes, healthy. healthy option as well as being very fast and efficient for you to even make first thing in the morning to have the house smell of fresh you know, freshly made bread is mm -hmm. just so you can't beat amazing. It. You, can, you cannot beat exactly. it. Exactly. And you don't add a whole load of sugar because a lot of processed bread or, you know, high street made um, bread is full of Salt sugars. Sugar. Yes. 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 So that is pretty much it. We've got our that ball made. We've got it our right loaf made. Literally. And I must stress, I did have a little bit of salt uh, to the side of that uh, bicarb. That's going to add flavour and um, create a really delicious loaf. So but every, just a tad. Just a tad. Just, just a tad, yeah. Your preference. Every baker needs their signature. Okay, so if you're baking at home, it's great to have a signature cut on the, on the loaf just to mm -hmm. make sure people know that it's yours. Right, okay? right. So let's I'm, see your signature move. This isn't mine. Come oh. on. I can't, I can't show people, otherwise they'll steal it. Oh, it's so like I'm that. I'm going to show you a generic one, just like that. Okay. And there we go. That pot goes into the oven at about 230. Okay. You need quite a hot oven. It needs to be very hot. And that goes into the oven. And how long would you put that in for? About 20 minutes, 25 oh, minutes. Wow. So how quick is that? That's amazing. Okay. So I you, cannot do you come, you come across people that like, a lot of people that's trying to get off the bread? Yes, um, again, you know, I think life is about balance and it definitely is like that with food. And you can have everything that you like, but within, you know, consistency of, you know, how much you have. Mm -hmm. And with, like I said... An so a balanced approach. A balanced approach, exactly. But this is not even about the balance, because this one does not leave you feeling bloated. It's had ingredients today, which is really simple. Mm -hmm. And buttermilk is really good for you. And it actually you know, will help you not feeling so, you know, sort of full up. So there's some advantages to buttermilk, I'm told. I believe that there's some advantages. Yes. Um, could you refresh, refresh us on at least... You know a couple of the advantages of buttermilk as opposed to what does it do? What does it do? Is it, does it help with digestion? Is it is, yes, it, is this true? Definitely. I've heard it's a, that's what it's really a, about. It's you've actually told you've actually answered my okay, question. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so yes, no, well, it does help with digestion. Okay, okay. And it's a really good alternative because again, it doesn't make you feel bloated. And we're using other ingredients here, oh. which is going to be on top of the bread. And with generally bread, you know, having it on its own, you don't need to have a specific. Um, sort of ingredient with regards to it has to be like what we're making right now. What are we doing? Absolutely. So I'm just going to show you. This is one we made earlier. Oh, wow. There we have it. Oh. Fresh Irish soda bread. Traditional, really delicious. So quick, so easy. And look look how pretty that looks. Come on. You said Irish. Irish. It's Irish. Did oh. I not mention that? Okay. Yes, it's, it's Irish um, originally uh, from Ireland. That's how... They made their loaves. They wouldn't. They wouldn't use yeast. They would use soda. Oh, all right, different, but, different, different, different. And yep. with this sort of bread, you can actually have it on its own, or as we're going to do today, we're going to add some uh, ingredients on that's top it. of that. I'm going to cut this in to make it into half. a type of a meal. So that's what's really important about having this type of bread, so that yeah. it actually becomes a little bit more than what you would normally have, and it will actually turn into something a little bit right, brown. extra. That's it. Because yeah. it's wholemeal. Uh -huh. yes. uh, so indeed, I indeed. Switched it up. Excellent. I switched yes. it up. Um, we had half and half plain flour with uh, wholemeal flour. Ah, okay, more healthy, okay. more delicious. The so secret just, ingredient. That's it. I'm just going to slice. No longer a secret, mind you. But the secret's out, Ben. The secret's <laughs> out. So, Vaima, yeah, so, tell us more. Tell us more. Yeah, so basically, having um, soda bread and then having whatever ingredients that you're going to put on there can actually be like a, really a good snack 
or a proper meal mm -hmm. that you would like to have. It could even be for the morning or the evening, depending on what you put on top. Okay. okay. So for today, Absolutely. what we're having is... So not too heavy for the morning. You know some people struggle exactly. for their first meal of the day. They of like course. something light or something. Absolutely. Really? Yes. Yeah, so what we're having today is the... Um, we have an avocado. Oh, okay. Uh, Going to make a little guacamole. Avocado is amazing. It's a superfood. It's Fatty. really, it's really healthy for you in a sense that even for people that are um, sort of having chemotherapy, it helps them with the effects of chemotherapy. Okay. okay. So against yes. nausea, against feeling, you know, confusion, things like that. Mm -hmm. And also, again, uh, avocado is an ingredient on its own, which is difficult for most of us to digest. So you can actually put it in with other sort of. Um, Recipes. Okay, it complements. So it complements. Yes, yes, exactly. yes. I get you. A lot of people have it in salads. They're very salads hard to get, though, aren't they? Very, um, are they a seasonal type? Um, to be honest, um, we get our avocados from abroad, so. Oh, we're good. We're, we're good, yeah. We, we've got it all year round <laughs> if we want it. We have a lot of fruit and vegetables all year round in this country, so we're quite lucky with that. Yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, certain times yeah. of the year, yeah. it could be yeah. a little bit, you know, better quality or not. But at the same time, I think we're very, you know, fortunate in order to have everything that we need mm -hmm. most of the time. That's it. All year round. Absolutely. Yes. And I can see you've got fish over there. I've got some mackerel. I've got some uh, smoked mackerel. Really delicious. Okay. High in omega-3, obviously. Great for the brain. Um, and yeah, really high in nutrients. I think just we delicious. need more, of course, of fish in our diet because mm -hmm, it actually mm -hmm. helps us Is it good with our skin, yes. with our hair, and having those um, omega three uh, acids as well. It really gives us, you know, the the balance that we need. And you find people that have a lot of more fish in the Far East. They actually live longer. They have better. People health. in the Mediterranean as well. They eat a lot. Eat absolutely. a lot of fish, right? And the oils are amazing for you. Just be careful because it's fish, it could be tasty, a little bit salty. And obviously we want to make sure that we don't having that sort of taste. So yeah. during Ramadan, you know, have extra water, cut down a little bit on your salt. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, you hydrated, you know, having ingredients that have already natural water People get a very dehydrated, um, yes. as we do. I've been seeing people left, right and say, oh, well, I'm so thirsty, more than hungry. People are always talking about thirst, dehydration, Ramadan, anything that we can... We can well, work on certain, that nutrition. They say to have um, ideally like, you know, six to eight glasses of water, but obviously mm -hmm. that's going to make you feel a little bit sick. It's even if you're going to, or it's going to stop you from having That's food, chugging it down, food. right? And it's so spoil your you appetite. Have foods that actually contain the natural waters already in mm -hmm. there. So that could help you. So things like, you know, the salads, you know, anything green, even watermelon, things like that, that could really help and make a difference. Yeah, and if you add absolutely. that to your general food, and obviously cut down on caffeine, cut down on, you know, salt generally, because that will actually, you know, keep you more hydrated. So that's mm -hmm. another clever mm -hmm. way of knowing mm -hmm. how to keep hydrated in that sense. And obviously staying away from the heat. Obviously your activity has to be a lot less. Monitor yeah. yourself. Monitor, monitor yourself. Monitor, be, be, be monitoring yourself, guys, is key. <laughs> carbohydrates. Talk to us about the carbohydrates because again, we, we want to keep a balance. If carbohydrates, sugars, sugars turn into yes. fats. Of course, we need to keep it balanced. But again, because we're fasting, we do need a selection and a variety. Mm -hmm. I see, sorry, just before I go ahead, you've added something red in there. What is yes, that? Yes, so we've some dried chili flakes. Okay. All okay. those people out there that love... love uh, oh, for extra flavour. Love some heat. Okay. okay. Give that, it a punch. That's it. Or a kick. That's it. It looks beautiful. It's a lovely colour. Yes. So it's a, it's a really... Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a meal in itself, really, having yep. the bread. And it's quite filling. Which quite filling, like, it's yes. going to keep you going throughout the day, and that's that's really what you want yes. with a meal like this. Um, it's light, it's easy, that's it. it's quick. Really easy. I mean, how quick was that bread to make? Ooh. Cool, cool. And, and there we it have it. It looks the part. Wow. It looks the part. Okay. Indeed, indeed. Very simple, really high in nutrients, as always. Um, just, just a fantastic dish. I would love to eat this every day if I could. And I do sometimes. So. <laughs> you yeah, indulge, it looks you delicious. indulge. And all the health benefits of that, even generally, like I said, we need to create new habits in the style in way in which we eat. Yes. So we need to educate ourselves on ingredients, on food, on health generally. And health, not just generally, by listening to other people, what they say, but knowing our own bodies. Yeah. And with that, then we can actually, you know, have the benefits of having, you know, all the, you know, types of food that we do like, mm. but obviously within, you know, It balance. looks wonderful. It looks absolutely brilliant. Thank however, you. however, however, fish and mackerel in particular is not on my radar, but I would love to find out. I mean, you're my guest, right? Yeah. So I'd love yeah. to find out. 
Well, we've Fahima. chosen mackerel because it lowers cholesterol and blood pressure. So mm -hmm. it's actually really healthy for you. And even though we have this lens and have this way of thinking that we don't like certain things, well, we need to add to that perspective and actually try different variations because with that, you've got, you know, avocado, you've got the soda bread, you've got the chili, and it could actually give you a different feel. So it'll be something that maybe you can actually try out or even, you know, you can try different types of fish. That's not the issue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. for today, we prepared this because it's very quick, simple and easy. So you can make the same thing for those who don't like Absolutely. mackerel. If salmon's your favourite, yes. you can flip it. Of course. Uh, You've got smoked salmon. It's versatile. It's open for interpretation. It's, it's okay. up to you guys. You know what you. Absolutely. Yeah. I uh, kind of go for the more exotic fishes <laughs> from the Caribbean. Just, 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 just my thing. <laughs> up to you guys. You know. Okay, let You're me try eating this. it, so. I'm really, really eager. Hope you enjoy it. I'm sure You're I a will. brave. You're a brave cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Taking okay. one for the team, Fahima. Yeah, we absolutely. like this. We like this. We like this. It's very easy to cut into. And that's another thing about not using yeast. Uh, it makes for a, uh, a lot, just sort of less dodgy dough. So it's more of a crummy mm. sort of texture. Ah, because um, it, so it even looks different than, than regular bread, right? Does, like yeah. gooey type of elasticated exactly, kind of bread. Exactly, exactly. I love this. And the fact that the chili gives that kick. And you know, even though- What hits you first? What hits you first? What hits you first? For me, it was the mackerel. All right. Mm -hmm. And then it was the, um, the chili. And you know that sitting on top of the um, avocado is great because you know avocado on its own, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to sort of you know take for the taste because mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. really can taste. be quite bland. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the bread just gives it the perfect consistency together. And like I said, I could have that as a meal quite easily mm -hmm. and be very okay. satisfied. Okay. okay, okay. And I will probably be finishing that off after. Great the show. feedback. Huh? <laughs> great feedback. No, that was. It. I mean, it, no, it, I love it. It, it does it's, look it's healthy. Really, it, it, does it does have look a healthy. With the chili and it's really beautiful. Good, good. Lovely mate. Glad Thank you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Is there any way that you could you could use the same ingredients? and try and jazz it up. Say like to make a, I don't know if you're gonna make a, you know for some people with the children, mums with the children, yep. can they turn it into a, maybe design the bread into a bap or a kind of bun or something like that? Of so that course, there's of different course. ways I mean, of a The traditional way is, 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 is as I showed you, but there's, there's no point following rules here. If, if you wanna do it differently, you're more than welcome. It's not gonna change the taste of the bread or the consistency. If you wanna shape it how you want and mm -hmm. put some different designs in it, you know, put some smiley faces in it for the children. Why not? You know, I'm just mm -hmm. amazed that you can actually make bread this quick, this easy. So easy. That seems really form. quick. Yeah, yeah, and it's, yeah. It's age old as it's well. Really this isn't this isn't new cooking. This is this is really old school. So, but you're bringing yeah. it fresh and new to people that actually can make in their homes, which yes. no, traditionally, mm -hmm. you know, it used to be done. But now, because of time, you know, cons you know, constraints, a lot of the time we don't feel we can cook from scratch. Because most but people don't want to really buy good. bread. Most people, um, people. Or should I say most people just want to quickly grab a loaf, a loaf yes. as opposed yes. to making bread. I grew up on homemade bread mm -hmm. and it doesn't take, you know, the bread in the shop doesn't taste like homemade bread. So Absolutely. I'd encourage you guys to give it a try. Make um, bread once and you will never stop making bread. You won't bread. be able to turn back, right? No. So we're coming, we, we're, we're almost running out of time, but Fahim, I wanted to leave the last word with you in terms of food, nutrition, motivation, and the whole you know, dynamic energy that you bring. Well, maybe I'll start with you. We have to open ourselves a little bit more. A lot of the times we are you know, set in our ways. So let's try you know, opening up ourselves to trying new ingredients, to trying out new ways of you know looking at food mm -hmm. and actually tasting it because I mean yeah. you know especially with children we encourage them to taste it to try and over the years and stages even their taste buds change so even yeah. for us we should do the same and just because we've done something you know for many years before that we've done for a long time doesn't mean we cannot be open to it and actually increase in our in our mm -hmm. health mm -hmm. and awareness and have more exciting food in front of us inshallah inshallah thank you both thank so you. much thank you for up having next us. Uh, Thank you. Up next, uh, Sister Masuma Jaffa with Ramadan Etiquette, Prayer and Dua. Wow, that was an interesting recipe and um, with the short hours, it certainly feels like we can want to eat all that food, but honestly, I think our stomachs get quite full. But thank you so much, Brother Bilal. That's an interesting um, um, recipe and inshallah we will be making that um, at home. Um, right now we have Ram continue with our Ramadan etiquettes and I'd like to welcome Sister Masuma. As Salaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Good. Thank you. How about yourself? Inshallah. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Um, so in terms of our discussion today, we're going to be talking about the prayers and the merits um, of, of this whole benefiting this holy month. Um, and really, um, we obviously have our daily um, wajib prayers that we um, perform every day. Um, how can we increase the, the benefits and really 
Although we can do numerous, you know, there's many um, prayers that are, are recommended every night to do between Mark and Abisha. What are the benefits of sort of increasing our 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 namaz and salah that we do in the month? So we have the nawafil, mm -hmm. which uh, you know you've got the um, the the ones that are in between the salahs that you can recite, and then obviously the the nawafil for salat al layl and then salat al layl itself. Um, what that does, we have in hadith that the nawafil actually compensate for the um, if we haven't got the salah to the level it should be at, right, I see. the, the nawafil will actually then come in supplement. and help bring it up yeah. and supplement it. Yeah. Mm. Um, so it's it's really good to get into the habit of that. It's even important, if it's, isn't it? Yeah. That, that's yeah. That's yes. what you're saying. Um, and even if we feel we can't do all of them, at least, mm. you know, sometimes I think people think that if they can't do all of them, they, can't mm. do any, they shouldn't mm. do any. But again, with any Mustab act, it's better to do some rather than nothing. And also with the Nawafil, you can actually give the Qaza of it as well. Mm. And you can do it, um, you know, while you're walking, um, you know, while you're sitting in the car, um, as long as, you know, you're in Wuzu, and then you can do it via Ishara as much mm -hmm. as, you know, it's, so even if you can't do it, on the masala because you don't have time. Mm. Even, You're no. at your desk in the office. Yeah. Looking so. at your screen. Of <laughs> <laughs> no, but on the way to work, yeah. you know, um, and things like that. But I think it's it's really important to understand that mm. this is this is the month where you up up your game, right? Spiritually. Okay. So you know you should be doing a lot more than you were, so that when the month finishes and you start lessening it, it doesn't lessen all the way back to what it was, right. but it lessens. So it's like a bell curve. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you start off here and you sort of heighten it and go higher and higher and higher and you reach a peak in my Ramzan and then you come down, but you don't come down all the way to where it was. Yeah. So you're still better off than you were before the month. So is it like um, looking at it like depositing into a bank account that you're just building up and there's so many blessings that are, you know, and they're multiplied Available. in this month so that we can just gain and remove our, you know, sins, yeah. ask for the repentance and then build up our bank account because we are going to obviously have yeah, our downfall in the, yeah. in the year as we continued, aren't yeah, we? Is no, that, for sure. Yeah, yeah. no, that, that's a beautiful way of looking at mm. it. So, yeah, I think it really works well. Okay. And when you're saying about sort of um, doing some of the nawafil, are you saying, so for instance, the Zohar Asal ones are longer, they're more? What if somebody couldn't fit the whole of them in? Could they start with two? Two regards, yeah. Two regards and then Better you do something up. than nothing. Okay. Um, even if you think, okay, I'm not going to do the Zohar Nasa one, maybe I'll just do the Fajr. Right. Because I'm prob we're probably going to be up till Fajr anyway. Yeah. So maybe just do the two rakats before, you know, the Azana Fajr, then do the Fajr Salah, and then go to bed. And then, you know, between Build. Maghrib and Isha, maybe yeah. you think, okay, you know what, I'm really hungry, I'm, I can't do four rakats between Maghrib and Isha, but I'll do the two rakats sitting after Isha, because right. that's only two rakats. So even if you're just doing some of them, it, it's better than not doing any at all. Okay, so is it better to start off with the ones that are associated with the, um, our Waji prayers rather than in, say, in the holy month where we've got, I mean, even you've got Salat al layl you've got, you know, and that's a regular one in the outside of this um, holy month. But so, for instance, if there's one that's, you know, two, two regards after, um, between your two prayers, for instance, is it better to sort of start on those or is it better to, even if you can't do your regular Nawafil ones in the year, to start somewhere in this month, which one would you recommend? Whatever works for you. It, okay. Again, I think the mustahab acts are there for us to connect to, um, as depending on our spirituality. Mm. Okay, so there's lots of mustahab acts. It's not just salah. There's lots of du'as that you could be reciting. The Holy Quran you could be reciting. Um, it, and they all have sort of equal merits, or are they? As there's they all have an effect on our soul, right? Um, which brings us closer to Allah. Okay. Now, depending on my soul will depend on what I connect to. Mm. So, and, and it's different, it's not necessarily that I'll connect to this one thing and that's the only thing I'll connect to, it'll be different on a different day. So it's like sometimes I feel like pizza, sometimes I'll feel like, I don't know, um, biryani, sometimes mm. I'll feel like pasta, whatever, it's, it's different. Variety, you know? yeah. yeah. So it's the same sort of principle. So if I, for example, if I pick up a dua to recite and I'm not connecting to it and I'm actually turning the pages to see mm. when it's finishing, mm. then really I'm not getting anything out of right. that dua then I need to just close that du'a, but not stop doing the ibadah. So if I've decided that I'm going to do ibadah, the du'a would have taken me half an hour. Ten minutes into the du'a, I realize I'm not connecting to this. Sure. 
I stop the du'a, but then for the next 20 minutes to make it that half an hour, I do something else. So maybe I try reciting some Mustab Salahs. Maybe I try reciting the Holy Quran. And, it, you know, just connecting is what's okay. important. Right. It's, there's no point doing it if I'm not connecting. Okay. But at the same time, sure. not using that as an excuse not yeah, to do not it at to all. Do it. Right. Do something and yes. let your soul, because maybe that it's Pick nurturing, place. isn't it? And yes. it, wants, it wants that... Um, input from the spirituality of, of Abada, but you're so don't deny your yeah, soul. Yeah, and you're allowing your soul to decide yeah. what it what right. it wants to connect to. So in the nights of Gadar, and um, there's you know the hundred fakars that recommended. Um, you know, I know when the nights were longer, people would you know sit with their counters, and you know, mashallah, mm. some amazing people out there that you know can go through the yeah. whole night. What, what's the best way to do that? Is it good to do those sort of, you know, ibada or because you're counting and you think, well, I've done a hundred, that's amazing. Or how would you? Again, it depends on if you're connecting. Mm. If you're doing, if you can do it with the presence of heart, great, mm. do it. Um, but if you're doing it as a tick box exercise, just counting and just, you know, yeah. okay, I'm doing it and that's it. There's no point. The other thing to remember as well is if I have kaza on me, although I can do a mustahab, Salah, right. even though I have kaza on me, it's not like fast. Yeah. If I have a kaza fast on me, I can't do a mustahab fast, I have to do the kaza fast. Mm -hmm. But with salah, I can do mustahab salah. It is still recommended to ensure that I pay the kaza back first because right. that is uh, a debt on me. Yeah. So, um, for example, um, instead of doing the four rakat nawafil of Maghrib, mm. I could do a, a Zohar kaza I have on myself. Right. Um, for example, instead of doing the hundred rakats, mm. um, I could do six days worth of kaza salahs. So that would be what, six times 17, yeah. which is 102? Yep. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not you're using my brain right now. I can <laughs> count on your <laughs> brain. So, you know, what, what you're doing is um, sort of making sure that you're not only paying back your debt, yeah. but you're doing it. Um, instead of doing the mustahabat, so you're yeah. telling God, I would have wanted to do this, but because I have kaza on me, I'm doing that. And inshallah, then you would get the sawab of both. Right. Because God is all merciful and all Definitely. loving. Um, so I think that's another thing to remember, okay. that, you know, tr make sure that you try to pay off the debts rather than, you know, doing extra. Yeah. Um, but also when you're doing the extra, to ensure that I'm actually doing it with presence of heart. Mm. It's not just a tick box exercise. I think that's really, really important. How, how would you recommend somebody can connect with the, through their prayer, like really build on their, in this holy month, to, you know, really feel their prayer and not just feel like, oh gosh, it's time to do my, you know, how, how would you say? It, so I think... It is easier to connect in this month anyway, mm. um, because there is, um, you know, the spirituality is higher in this month. Mm. It's like when you go for ziara or hajj, you know, it's much easier to Boost, connect. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So it, it is easier anyway. But I, the other thing I think we can be doing is maybe sort of, rather than rushing into the prayer, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I'd be cooking and then it's salah time and I'd just go and rush into the prayer. Just take a, just a few seconds just to sort of collect your thoughts, mm -hmm. understand what you're going to do. Um, you know, you're, the, the, you're actually going to be standing in front of the creator of the whole universe. Mm. That's huge. Um, start off with Adhan and Ikama and say it loudly. Trying to get all your five senses involved in the prayer is really, really important. So maybe using, um, you know, um, an, uh, an atar, mm -hmm. um, a mm. fragrance mm. of some kind, if it's perfume, atar, whatever it is. But keep that just for the salah. Again, That's beautiful, yeah, what yeah. happens is your mind, when it smells that fragrance, yeah. it automatically associates. goes into salah mode. Yeah, associates yeah. with the salah. Does exactly. Yeah. So, you know, so you're getting the, the, mm. the sense of smell involved. Um, you know, recite maybe just, just even a couple of lines of the Holy Quran. So again, you're getting your eyes involved. You're looking at the Holy Quran. You know, um, in the salah, you're looking at the Torah. Mm. So again, you've got a focal point. So you're getting your eyes involved. Say it out loud. So you're actually using your mouth to speak. You're li listening to the words, the holy words of, you know, of Allah. Um, start with the dhan nikama. So again, you know, you're, you're not just rushing into the salah. A lot of the times we go, we pray, we come yeah. out, and before we yeah. know it, we've finished the prayer mm. and we don't even realize that we weren't there. Yeah. So it's just... So the whole adab and etiquette of actually yeah. meeting your creator and being prepared yeah. is what I you're mean, saying. I mean, if you yeah. imagine, you know, if we were given, uh, you know, an appointment to see the queen, yeah. we would really prepare. Yeah. And I know when, when we give that example, people say, yeah, but we, you know, if we met her, met her five times a day every day, then we wouldn't prepare so much. <laughs> oh dear. But you do. It's yeah. like, you know, it... it I think realizing who you're standing in front of. This yeah. isn't just anybody. This is the creator, the creator of the whole universe. And also, it's like, um, you know, so say we have a busy day and, you know, you've got so many distractions going on. And I, sometimes you just think, you know, the, the Zohar prayers are such a blessing to be able to step out of your 
crazy world, chaos, yeah, and then to say, you know, God, it's just you and me, and that's it, and I don't want this, you know, the, the chaos that people bring, because obviously, mashallah, you know, whether you've got children, colleagues, whatever it is, it's noise, 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 mm. and then and the calmness, just to have yeah. that calm. Yeah. And, say, and you know, again, I think, you know, if it's done correctly, mm. it is actually really, really beneficial mm. mentally mm. to have that calmness, you know, where we sort of just stop, because we're constantly on the go, on the go. And we're, you know, there's so much input happening, you know, and it, it is, it's just that time Come where I'm just, just relax, just, yeah. just be there, just be present yeah. and just talk to my creator. And a lot of the times we're thinking about, you know, we've got to get back to this and we've got to do this. Mm. But if we realize that if I get the creator on board, that thing's going to oh, happen gonna and it's going to yeah, work it's and it's going to, yeah. Absolutely. So, so it's just wonderful. realizing if I take, you know, actually if I concentrate on this, it's going to sort it's that out. Sort. It's faith, isn't it? Having that Thank you so much for coming to an end again and it just goes so quickly and you have so much to share and it's just thank so wonderful you. to be able to hear that and uh, thank you so much once yeah, again. Thank you for having me. Inshallah we will see you very soon. Inshallah. And um, so right now we have our adorable Abbas giving us the daily hadith. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Abbas and I'm here to bring you the daily hadith from Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. Today's hadith is about forgiveness. In Ramadan, the doors of non-forgiveness is closed and forgiveness is open. That's why Allah forgives all of our bad stuff and sins and sometimes replaces them with good stuff and doubles them. This hadith about forgiveness is from the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. See you next time, inshallah. Morning Baraka Ramadan special. Fik, your question is answered. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyid. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. What was your menu today then? Dal chow. Oh, bless. <laughs> you love. Okay, so we have another question. Um, it's from a, a young adult in the UK. Um, they say, Assalamu alaikum. In the month of um, Ramadan, I missed a few of my fasts, but I don't remember the exact number of days. Okay. How many days do you recommend me to fast? And my other question is, does taking an inhaler in the periods of fasting break your fast medically if necessary? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. According to the Grand Marcha, Sayy Sadiq Shirazi, may Allah prolong his life, taking an inhaler does not break the fast. You can take an inhaler, it's not a problem. For those uh, brothers and sisters out there who have asthma, it's perfectly allowed, it doesn't break your fast. If they invalidate it, you may continue. In terms of uh, owing fast, and you're not sure how many you owe, uh -huh. It's a bit more tricky. <laughs> it is best. Uh, well, I shouldn't say it is best because that means it's iffy. But I, I will say, according to uh, you know the Maraja, and I've spoken to uh, one of the scholars about this. He says that the amount that you are sure and certain of, you fast that many days. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think there's two numbers, there's a lower and a higher. As in, I know I miss between eight and ten days. I'm not sure if it's eight. I'm not sure if it's 10, but I can be certain it's between, it's no... It's one uh, or the other. It's one or the other. Then you do the minimum. Oh. Do the eight. Okay. Do the eight days, and that should suffice. Okay. What about for those people who were not born Muslim, became Balik, and then embraced Islam? Do they have to make up their fast for being, yeah, the equivalent of... You know, some, I don't know, somebody came Muslim when they were 50. Did they have 35 years? A man, does he have 35 years of... Yes, he does. No, I'm joking. He doesn't. No, he doesn't. No, 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 no. Uh, when someone, you know, um, you know joins Islam, um, you know, he, he's purified and he's not... Um, it is not mandatory upon him to make up, um, you know, the ahkam of previous. So the prayers, the fast, the zakah, khums. That's not mandatory. Mm -hmm. If the rabbi would like to do so, you know, there's, 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 there's no, it, there's yeah. definitely because it shows a bit of sincerity, and inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa taala will reward you. But it's not mandatory upon it, no. And what mm. about mm. medication generally? Um, the rulings around, um, so people obviously try to have it at the whole time, if they can last them through the day, if it once a day. But what about other types that perhaps people aren't so aware of that could actually invalidate your fast? I mean, all all medications are will invalidate your fast in terms of tablets. You're not mm -hmm. allowed to take any tablets uh, of, of such. Uh, injections, yes, you are allowed to take injections for medicinal purposes. That is allowed. 
uh, according to say Sadiq Shah. Not injecting water in your arm no, to no, hydrate no. you and stuff <laughs> no, like this. No, 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 not that. But maybe you know, if a diabetic you know wants to inject himself with insulin, he can keep the fast and inject himself. Oh, insulin. That's, that's okay. Mashallah. According to say Sadiq Shah, mm -hmm. that's fine. The only uh, injection which is now, I think it's, it's called enema. I believe it's called. That's not allowed. That will invalidate the fast. Otherwise, other injections are, are allowed. And why would that invalidate the fast? What's how does that well, work? it's it's on the terms of the water being able to go in back into the stomach. Okay. Uh, along along those lines, that's why it's not allowed. Mm hmm. Okay. Very very interesting. Um, so, people who, for instance, had fast to make up last year, for instance, mm -hmm. and were meant to make it up in the year and never got because maybe due to health, yes. and then aren't able to fast this year due to the same health issue, do they, they, they have to have their cut-off point? Do they, they, what happens with their fast from last year? Do they continue them or? They, I mean, we, we discussed this on, one of our sh on another show on the Imam Hussein TV, so we discussed that if you aren't able to make up your, your, what, what is owed to you, uh, what, what you owe, so that's fine, what, what do you do? There are other things, I mean, there's this, uh, you know, you can pay, uh, kafara, kafara? Uh, it's not really a kafara because a kafara is a penalty. This okay. is more of an alternative or a substitute. Okay. Because you were you were ill, it's not that you've got a penalty to pay. Yes. It's, it's more. It differs. Of, it differs. There's, there's a substitute, as in yeah. you can fast uh, again, or you could feed sixty people. Uh, you know, you give a month, which is just, it's about seven fifty grams, I believe, of rice or wheat or, or, or raisins or dates. You can give something like that. Uh, you know, in, instead of fasting. Um, or you can open 60 people's fast and, and give them iftar. So there's, you know, there, there's substitutes uh, for you to do instead of fasting. So you can do them uh, before the time runs out. And if the time does run out, then there is also another alternative. There's, um, you know, there, there's the money you can give uh, and things like that. However, you know, there's no need for you, you to take that for, to run out of time. Mm -hmm. You've got one year from Ramadan to another Ramadan. It's plenty of time. If you can't make it up, you know, just beforehand, you know, do the substitutes, you know, yeah. pay, pay, pay uh, you know, uh, the, the oh, I don't want to say kafara because not kafara. Not kafara, yeah pay, yeah. pay the alternative or give some wheat or, or flour or raisins. So Is speaking about kafara, so, sorry, sister, but speaking about kafara, what about people who they're Muslim by name but not by practice, but then they get to understand their religion? Because many people are born to Muslim families. Yes. The family didn't practice. They don't really have an idea about Islam, but they get somewhere on their own journey I mean, is, and then they, and then they, so they switch important. on they this switch why, on this is why it's so important that those people who are born muslim mm -hmm. and you know for our children we teach them the ahkam and we, we we tell them about ramadan and to be honest there are so many people who um you know are not practicing but in ramadan they start they, they keep the fast there's so many mashallah we have so many non-hijabis that are fasting in ramadan yeah, yeah you know yeah yeah that are ramadan so you know, it's it's to, to to say that oh they weren't practicing or this and that. It's not really. I don't want to say it's not an excuse, but it's very uncommon to see that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, no, I mean period. You know, I mean period. Yeah, you know, period some people that they come from a family that's not religious. Yeah. They brought up in that environment, and they just didn't really know. They knew there was a Muslim. They had yeah. a Muslim name. They got a Muslim heritage, but they had no practice around them. But then in their own journey, they go to uni. They meet other yeah. Muslims, whatever. They, they get somewhere fast. in their life, but yeah. they start to mm -hmm. practice a religion. Then are those fast from? When they became Balik on their neck, do they have to make them up? Do they have to pay kafara? Do they, what do they do? They, what's their situation? The situation is is that were they practicing Muslims? Did they accept Islam? And were they, um, you know, were, were were they practicing? Then they have to give, you know. Then, then if they're neglecting, you know, fast mm. on purpose, which is haram, then there's a kafara to pay for that. Mm. And but they were jahil. That's it. Just Muslim jahil, by name, jahil by identity. Allahu Akbar, you know, I mean, <laughs> okay. may God forgive them, may God Inshallah, forgive them for I mean, that. I mean, I mean, I mean. Um, but they, they, they would, I, I believe so, that they would have to make, I need to check on that actually. But I would believe that, because uh, Something it, would be incumbent on them. It would be incumbent, not just on them, but there's, you know, like I said, we were discussing this before, that like in mm. the Quran, uh, the order of fasting is upon every human being, it's not just Muslims, it's everyone, the Quran addresses the people. You know, nice. so it's like oh, okay, nice. the Christians oh, nice. and the Jews and the Hindu, everyone has to like you know. But uh, I think with um, it's interesting because even though people you were talking about you know um, ladies who don't observe hijab and even they'll fast, but it's surprising actually how many people find um, and perhaps not from the school of Al Bayt as much as, as as much as the other schools that they f 
Ramadan is a Sheikh Ramadan is their central point of their spirituality, yes. piece, and that is what connects them to being a Muslim. Mm -hmm. So whether they pray in the rest of the year, they don't observe, and they wear all sorts of clothes. Ramadan's a big thing. It's to a them. big thing. Love so it's yeah. actually a, you know maybe that point of guidance where Allah will. Indeed, put, we need to you know, we need seed. to help we need to help these people definitely. Yeah. I mean, I would like I would like to say that you know, may, you know Allah will forgive them and this and that. And inshallah, Allah will. But you know, when we think about it, um, you know, it's like someone who's a Muslim but doesn't pray. Those qadha prayers add up. Mm. You know, do you owe those prayers? Yeah, you do. What, you know, will Allah forgive you for them? Inshallah, definitely he will. Well, if he's, well, if he's Muslim, you says, know? "Well, I'm a good person. I don't hurt anybody. I do. I give charity. I do this. I do that." And yeah, okay, I haven't done Still my have prayers. Still have to fast. Still have to fast. Still have to pray. Mm. This is. There's no excuse. I mean, the, the only um, you know excuses for for not fasting is. You're ill, you're traveling, you're pregnant, you've lost consciousness, mm. you're, you've lost sanity. Mm. You know, yeah, that's it, mm. really. Because, mm. you know, we're there's living, in a, we're living in a strange time now. We're living in, a, in an era where there's probably the most Muslims living in the Western world, or, 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 or you know, compared to in past times. And um, I don't know if people are losing their identity, or, you know, some people are developing their own brand of Islam. I mean, I watched the TV show once where. I'm almost, you know, there was Muslims all together and everybody went to make salam. One woman said, well, I don't really, you know, I, I tend to just go away for quiet meditation. I'm not really into all that. So I, I have my own connection with God. So it's good you're not doing the Jama'ah and that, but that's, I'm going to go and sit in another room. That's, that's, that's excellent. And, and I mean, that's, that's, that's excellent. There's nothing wrong with that. However, we have Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. You know, and what was his, what was his role? Or to mm -hmm. tell us to go meditate in a room? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. He is the example. He is who we copy, who we aspire to become like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He taught us and he taught through action. So if Rasulullah alayhi wa did it, we have to do it. We don't know more than him. Exactly. Mm -hmm. we don't, it's not mm -hmm. that we don't know more than him, we don't know better than him. Mm -hmm. 100%. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it, although the person may be sincere in their connection yeah. to God, not they're, the still, they're still prescribed, regimented. Okay practices that we, we hear and we obey yes. ba uh, based on the Quran and not based Definitely. on the Quran. So there's no ex excuse for missing the prayers and missing the fasts. Okay. But okay. having said that, I mean, I think there's a difference, isn't there? Because you're, what you're saying to, and not to confuse it, so for instance, um, pe when people go to religious ziaras or visitations, um, I know amongst women, um, and I don't know about men, but um, I've seen women, they'll go in groups um, where they'll do, you know, certain du'as, they'll do it together, it's a group mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. which is not obviously a recommended thing, but it helps them. But then somebody who wants to do their own worship is absolutely allowed to do that it's you know indeed we're, we're not saying well, we're not saying that don't do extra yeah. and don't have your own unique style yeah. when it comes to matam we know that the pakistanis do it a little different from the iranians who do it a little different from the arabs who do it a little, a little different from the uh, africans you know we have our own styles and we have our own identity and we have our own methods and there's nothing wrong with that however there are certain things prescribed by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which we have to do in accordance with yep. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi And you can't wa cho choose something else as your alternative. Like, say for example, something that says, uh, when people do salat, I don't, I go and do martyr because that's my closeness. <laughs> exactly. That. Like, you're just doing an alternative. Exactly, and it's like if, if you know, like, if you go to hajj, there, there's, there's certain things you certain have to do. Thing, yeah. You can't make up your own hajj and say, well, I'm, I'm not going to even do tawaf. I'm just going to like, you know. <laughs> stare at, stare stare at the Stare at it yeah, or, yeah. or, you know, so you can't do that. <laughs> mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, it's, uh, it's an interesting one, definitely. Um, so any other tips last before we End finish? Tips. Okay, first of all, um, if you do miss your fast, please write them down somewhere. Have a mm. tally chart or whatever, God forbid you have a tally. <laughs> but to say, that, but better, <laughs> better than forgetting, even use a notebook yeah, in your yeah, phone, just, in your just phone just or something. Just write them down yeah. somewhere. Uh, if you can't complete them by the, the whole year, there is an alternative. Uh, there's a substitute that you can do. So it doesn't mean that you have to fast. You, can, you, know, you can you know, pay money or do something else like that. For those uh, who were, you know... Um, in, in the state of Jahiliya and world Muslim I uh, knew about it may Allah forgive you but if you can try and, 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 and you know pay, pay back if not um, you know go see your, your local uh, scholar uh, or, or, uh, or and ambassador of your marja and, and mm -hmm. organize uh, you know something um, so, and get some sort of you know diagnosis and prescription of what to do in that situation for but sure, something for sure. and just you. finally um in terms of when you want to feed people and you've got to make up fasts, yes. who would you recommend would be the best um, source to give that to? Good question. Uh, I would like to say, you know, give it to whatever is easy. So, you know, go to your local mosque and sponsor 
and if that, but let's be honest, there, there's people out there who, who need it more. Who are definitely needy. Who, yeah, who are needy mm. and need it more. It doesn't have to be a Muslim, does it? Just a needy person? I mean, exactly. Paul, miskin you know, is miskin, right? Yeah, miskin is miskin. But in terms of fasting, yeah. it, it has to be Muslims. Okay. In okay. terms of fasting. But in general, no, the, you know, for charity purposes, no, it can be anybody. I stand corrected, um, thank you. And sometimes it's even cheaper to, to, to go abroad and, 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 and feed people abroad. But not should be, so, that should be the incentive, it should be to feed the well, people. No, it's cheaper and, it's, and they're more needy, you know, you're killing two birds with one stone. Yeah. Bosh. So, yeah. yeah. So you can basically just go to a charity, renowned, somebody you trust, and somebody back home in your villages. Yeah, definitely. Sure it's Pakistan, place. Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, Africa, Absolutely. and any third world country where people are starving. Okay. Muslims are starving, definitely. All right then. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And um, inshallah, you have a blessed day. I will do my best. <laughs> and please remember us in your du'as. I will definitely remember you. Inshallah. Please Thank remember you. me in your du'as, inshallah. inshallah. Thank you so much. Um, that's all we've got time for. And we wish our viewers a blessed day too. Keep us in your du'as. <laughs>